Uh, just to kick this off, uh, I, I wanted to do this live stream because I know here in the United States, and I'm sorry to say this is going to be somewhat of a U.S.-based uh, discussion, but I'm happy to talk about abroad. There's some things that are going to be uh, applicable anywhere. But the purpose of this is that here in the United States, a lot of folks are considering uh, applying for colleges, like sort of this is college application time. And um, I wanted to answer folks' questions. Uh, if you're considering, ever considering getting a degree in city planning, maybe it's an undergraduate degree or you wanna go back to school, get a graduate degree. Um, and just to give you like a quick heads up on where I'm coming from. So I uh, got my undergraduate degree in urban studies um, from Cornell University. Then I went and got a master's degree in city planning uh, at the University of Oregon. Then I went and got a PhD in city planning at UC Berkeley. And now I'm a city planning professor at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Um, so I've been through practically every degree you can get in city planning and I now teach city planning, so uh, I feel like I'm somewhat positioned well to answer some questions about uh, you know, getting the degree, uh, what it takes, uh, if it's a good idea or not. Um, and, and I should say prior to being a city planning professor, I was a city planner, so I actually had a job as a city planner. So I know what it's like to go from school to work. Um, so this, uh, this is all just about um, your questions. I'm happy to answer them. I have a lot to say about this topic. Um, um, and uh, yeah, so I, so Cameron already applied, so good for you. Um, I know for us here at Cal Poly, the, the deadline for California State Universities is November 30th. So those of you who want to learn from me specifically uh, can apply to Cal Poly and you could be in my classes in the fall. Um, uh, so uh, I teach the intro class for freshmen. So you can come, come and take uh, the intro class from me. Uh, all right, so Jared is, inter is interested in taking a planning degree from Berkeley. Uh, yes, that's always a good program. Uh, Cal Poly is a little bit better, I would say, but no, I'm just joking. I've got a degree from Cal, uh, from <laughs> Cal too. So uh, Ellis asks, can you go for city planning masters from a computer science bachelor? Uh, that's a great question. So most urban planning programs, uh, almost all that I've ever come across assume that when you're getting your master's degree, you have no prior background in city planning. And in fact, when I got my master's degree in city planning, uh, I was the only one who had any sort of planning background at all. So people came from uh, far and wide. So computer science, natural resources, geography, political science. Um, you know, there was some that are more common and some degrees that are more related to city planning than others, but truly you can come in with no knowledge of city planning and come out a city planner. So uh, yeah, so Tax Your Lane says, I was an aerospace engineering major that moved into urban planning. So it can happen. Uh, yeah, interested in the Utah Florida, Florida online uh, master's of urban planning program. There's no planning programs in Alaska. Yes. So from what I understand, the University of Florida is the only accredited online master's program in the United States, but more is certainly to come. So um, if you are uh, like this person in Alaska or in some place where you cannot get a master's degree, look at the Florida uh, program or wait a couple years because I'm sure there are more coming in the pipe. Uh, this is something that here at Cal Poly we're talking about, uh, but more and more students are sort of expecting the potential for an online experience for uh, their master's. Um, yeah, so uh, somebody said uh, UF's planning program, program is phenomenal. Um, okay, sorry here. So. Uh, okay, so somebody said, uh, so he talked with an urban planner at the city of Portland to find out what, about it. He talked me out of it, but I and I regret uh, not moving forward anyway. I think that's an interesting perspective. The city of Portland, Oregon, I always joke with students, uh, you can't throw a rock without hitting a planner in the city of Portland. Portland is a very saturated place for planners because it's such a cool city to be in and has a lot of progressive planning policies, so it's just exciting for a planner to be in. But uh, what we're seeing in the field right now is that in general, uh, we're not our our degree programs are not producing enough planners. So, here at Cal Poly, for example, uh, just about everyone who's searching for a planning uh, job gets one after their four years here as an undergrad or two years as a grad student. Uh, uh, we're hearing from our industry connections that we just need more planners. Um, so that's been a really uh, good thing for our uh, applicants uh, and our students that they all seem to have a high success getting jobs. Um, okay, so sorry. So let's see here. Uh, Greg Park asked, "What kind of uh, age range do you typically see in planning programs?" I'm out of school for six years. I'm worried I'm the oldest one there. Uh, you will not be the oldest one there. So at the undergraduate level, yes, we see a lot of young folks straight out of uh, high school. 
uh, but non-traditional students are totally welcome. In our graduate program, we have people uh, older than me in the program, no problem, um, you know, in their 40s and higher. Uh, this is never too late um, as far as planning is concerned. Let's see. Um, and this is going fast here. Um, let's see, a bit unreal. I was 33 year old working in tech. Am I tired of my job in Patchwork, Walkable Cities, and Urban Development? What are the ways to involve potential career paths or ways to change? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, obviously, getting a planning degree isn't the only way to get involved. Activism is a great way to sort of do it on the side or sort of as a hobby. Um, uh, if you're looking to sort of retool, uh, we often say people in a, an existing career to go back to get a master's degree. Um, it's a two-year commitment, so I know it's not for everyone. Um, but a master's degree in city planning will open up all the sort of doors to jobs that you might want. Um, so what are some things I can do before studying city planning to make sure it's something that I want to do before committing to thousands of dollars to it? That's a great question. And I should say, uh, keep asking your questions in the comments. I'm trying to keep up, uh, but I might miss yours. And if I don't get to it, ask it again. Um, so what are things you can do? Uh, watching YouTube videos is not a bad way. I'm a little bit biased there as well. Um, but you know, not just my channel, but there are lots of channels now where you can get that information. Read books. Uh, read up on it. Um, you know, uh, Walkable Cities by Jeff Speck is the one that I always recommend uh, to folks who are new to the new to the field. Um, that's a pretty fr uh, friendly one to get started with. Also, just get involved in local politics. Follow your elected officials, your local activist groups on social media. Stay involved. Go to meetings and just sort of see what it feels like to be there. Go to a city council meeting once. Go to one. Go to a planning commission meeting and see what it uh, what a city planner does when they're giving testimony to a public body and just see what that's like. Uh, th uh, I would also say uh, you can do an informational interview with a city planner. Most city planners are happy to, happy to talk to aspiring planners about what their job is like and hopefully they don't discourage you quite as much as that planner from Portland did. Um, Let's see. So, um, how poor? Okay, how important? So, I'm just picking ones off the top. Katie asks, how important is, it to, important is it to get AICP certified or get a master's degree? Now, um, two qu there's two questions there, really. So, is it important to get a master's degree? If you have a bachelor's in planning from an accredited uh, program, like here at Cal Poly, ours is accredited, but not all of them are. Um, you probably don't need a master's degree unless like your, where you work, they'll pay you more to get a master's degree. Like if like if your salary bump is dependent on getting a master's degree, then you might want to get one. Um, if you have a, an unaccredited program, you might want to get a, a master's degree just to get the sort of the accreditation bonus there. Or um, if you um, are sort of coming from outside the field and want to so, or sorry, sorry, if you're in the field but you want to retool, like you're in Landy's but you really want to be a transportation planner, you might want to take those two years to sort of uh, evolve your sort of direction and find a job somewhere else in a new subfield. That could be a, a good uh, choice for a master's program. AICP is the uh, American Institute of Certified Planners. It's like the certification process for planners. You have to like do a certain number of years of school or experience or a combination of both, then take a test, and then you have to maintain your certification through hours of education and service and things. Um, I don't think it's like super necessary, again, unless your job requires it or, or will give you a pay bump. Um, I did it, uh, but I don't think it's necessarily like something you have to do. Um, so again, what are some uh, good master's programs that are available 100% online? The University of Florida's is the only accredited master's program in the country right now in the United States, as far as I know, but more might be coming online in the next few years. Um, what types of jobs, Nick asks, exist for a city planning degree holder? Uh, and do the opportunities differ with cities that are more progressive in their planning? That's a good question. I mean, the most obvious job that exists for a city planning degree holder is city planner. I think one of the great things about this major uh, in this field is that uh, we have a one-to-one -one connection with the with the profession. So like if you were to get a degree in say geography or political science or sociology, like there are geographers and political scientists, I guess, but there aren't that many jobs. And every university in the world produces political science majors and geography majors. Uh, but there's fairly a uh, smaller group of, of schools that provi uh, provide city planning majors and degrees. Um, and then there's a direct job right afterwards. Like you can like go get a job as a city planner with a city planning degree. So that's really cool. Um, and again, a lot of our majors will do that. Uh, but there are other ways you can sort of take that degree. Um, those degrees are great in the nonprofit sector. I mean, I've known people who got an urban studies degree from Cornell when I was an undergrad and went and worked in investment banking. Um, the nice thing about an urban uh, planning degree is while there is that direct one-to-one -one connection with the career path that, uh, of being a city planner, 
City planning attracts people who are multidisciplinary, integrative thinkers, generalists, people who like to think about complex topics um, in really interesting ways. And those skill sets are increasingly um, in demand, even in an AI-fueled world. Sort of the ability to synthesize information and sort of work with the general public and things like that are valuable uh, skills that can be used in other uh, uh, fields as well. But city planning is the most common one. So what kind of analytical degrees might be most useful for future path in city planning? I'm currently studying industrial engineering and I'm curious how it fits with city and transportation planning. Yeah, I mean, there are sort of engineering degrees that are sort of planning adjacent. There's a lot of things that are planning adjacent, which is what's great about being a planner. Um, but we see most of our engineering folks coming from uh, civil and transportation engineering. Um, and we have a lot of sort of, uh, you know, crossovers and classes and things like that with those type of engineers. So uh, people who en engineer public infrastructure and services, like, right, like, so if you're the kind of person who wants to engineer water mains, sewer mains, streets, like all those things, um, you will be sort of touching city planning as you sort of go about your job. Um, so those are some of the places where you can sort of uh, sort of integrate. Um, Let's see, is it possible to easily move into urban planning with a civil engineering degree? I'm interested in engineering, uh, but I want to work in planning once I get out into the field. So if you are someone who has a degree who's not a city planning degree and you're trying to apply for city planning jobs, let's say with like a related degree like, like civil engineering or geography um, or maybe like a political science or something like that, you might have success. Um, but uh, you're probably going to be going up against um, applicants who have a degree in city planning, potentially from the same school that that person is hiring uh, you had a degree from, right? So there's a certain network effect um, and there's a certain like preference towards people who have city planning degrees. To bolster your chances, um, I would say uh, if you could do an internship uh, while you're getting your degree in a city planning office, like public or, or as a consultant, that could really help you just demonstrate that you have that experience. Um, otherwise, showing that you have experience using, like, say, G GIS, geographic information software, might help you, especially if you're coming from a technical field, because that's a technical skill that planners have that if you also had, it might sort of bolster your case as well. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. So there. Uh, somebody said there are two main job, job fields in planning: government and consulting. A career consultant advised me to stay in government. Consultants are usually the first to be let go in a recession. Um, yeah, that can be true. Um, definitely, um, the the recessions hit planners. Uh, same with all the building trades. A lot of city planning uh, sort of relates to uh, when new like cities grow and new housing gets built, and when there's nothing getting built, uh, city planners are sometimes having a hard time. Well, sometimes have a hard time. Uh, finding a uh, work, um, but um, you know, so so it's cyclical in that way. Uh, we've been lucky that we really haven't had a major recession uh, since 2008, 2009 here in the United States. Uh, so it's been a little while. So it's been a good run. Um, so I, I will say that on the topic of public sector versus private sector, um, I was a private sector planner. I always thought myself to be someone who would want to serve at a local government, uh, but I got a job in the private world, world of private consulting. And um, there are pros and cons to that. So the pro generally is what we say kind of in the, in the field is that private sector planners get paid more in salary, uh, but your benefits might not be as good. Like I definitely had health care uh, in a 401k and stuff like that working in the private sector. But sometimes the public sector, you have like a government pension, depending on where you are, um, and sort of like more days off and things like that. Uh, so sometimes the benefits are better in the public sector than the private sector. The public sector is great uh, depending on your size of city. If you really like to be a generalist, like if you work as a city planner in a small community, you're going to be working on everything from like a smoking ban ordinance to the update to the zoning code to, you know, whatever else. Like you're working on lots of different things. Um, if you're a consultant, many times you're specializing. Like when I was working as a planner, I specialized in doing comprehensive plans or general plans. So I just did general plans in different communities in California. So I did the same kind of plan in a few different communities. Um, but uh, so if you really have to get good at a type of plan, like you're really into climate, you want to do climate action plans, uh, consultancy might be a great way to do that because you get to work for uh, lots of different communities doing that same kind of plan. Um, whereas if you don't really care about what kind of plan you want to do and you just want to be uh, in a city and sort of see that sort of change happen in one community, maybe local government is better for you. Uh, somebody says my benefits are rough in the private sector. Yeah, it depends on, again, the firm and where you are in the country and stuff. Um, let's see. Um, I'm very interested in city planning and master's planning. 
uh, master planning, considering a dual master's program in city planning and architecture. Is this something you would suggest? Uh, Cordero Curry, uh, I actually have a dual master's degree in architecture and city planning. So I went into my master's degree uh, process thinking I was going to be an architect. So I um, I did the, started a three-year architecture program, a master's in architecture program. Halfway through, um, I decided I think I would want to do planning more. Uh, but I continued on. I got the, the degree in architecture. And then I tacked on another year to get the degree in planning. So uh, I had to do that sort of on my own. There, there was no sort of uh, established dual track. Um, but enough of the sort of credits uh, crossed over. Um, that it made it so I only had to tack on a year. So um, instead of doing two completely separate degrees for for uh, for that. So I mean, even in places where it's not advertised, I think it's probably possible. What I would recommend for students, especially students going to get their master's degree, is to get in contact with a professor in the department before they apply or right after they apply, but before they get in, and find out if it's a good fit for you. Uh, lots of planning programs are uh, sort of interested in bringing in more students, especially at the master's level, and are happy to talk with prospective students and sort of answer your questions. And if they have like a dual program or sort of have accommodated dual programs is a great question uh, to ask those professors. Um, so I'm curious whether urban planning degrees are a good choice when you want to go into a specific field, i.e. sustainable mobility, or a degree in that specific area be better? That's Mason Manley. Um, I guess if you could find a specific degree in sustainable mobility and that's your interest, that probably is a good option. Um, I find that most uh, universities don't have very specific majors or degrees like that, um, but they'll have like an ur uh, a city planning degree or urban studies degree and you can specialize or concentrate in an area of your choice like transportation or housing or land use or something like that. And that sort of reflects the, the nature of the industry, right? So we have lots of folks who become environmental planners or land use planners or economic development planners. Uh, but a lot of them end up just get the city planning degree and then specialize within that, uh, within that major. So um, again, if you have a degree program that is exactly what you want, maybe that's the right option. But you know, the general nature of a city planning degree is nice too. It gives you flexibility and you can specialize within that major typically. Um, how long did I work as an uh, urban planner architect? About three years before I got my PhD. Um, let's see. What applications do you typically see for GIS? Um, I mean, GIS is used quite often in mapping uh, it, in pretty every, much every level of city planning and just about every program uh, uh, or major or degree program uh, teaches you GIS, at least the most basic level. Um, let's see, oh, oh. So we had a Mustang alumni. Oh, that's nice. To, yep, uh, I'm at Cal Poly. Um, how about history majors? Can they transfer over well to a planning career? This is the spot. Again, with a history major, it depends on what you mean by transferring over to a career. If you have an undergraduate in history, like if you've got a degree in history uh, and you want to get a master's degree, absolutely. If you want to get the master's in history, like your history major will not hold you back. If you're trying to apply for a position as a city planner with a history degree, you might be it might be an uphill battle depending on any sort of internships or experience you have. Um, all right, let's see. Um, uh, what about business like for micro mobility? Like, oh, you want to get into like, you want to work for Lime or something like that? Um, we have uh, folks who come in from the city planning backgrounds or city planning degrees, but also is, is it like a tech company? Some of these um, pro, uh, some of these uh, companies are just like tech. So they come in from, uh, from with other skill sets. So maybe that could be good if you have like a degree in computer science. Again, uh, one thing I would recommend is try to find the person that has the job that you want, right? Like if you're looking at a Lime or Bird or a Uber or something uh, for micro mobility, like a bike share or something, scooter share, go see like what job you'd want in that organization. Find out what their background is. Like if they have it published, that's great. If not, set up an informational interview if you can. Um, ooh, digital twins are the future of city planning. I'm, I co authored a paper, Jared, on digital twins and city planning, and that's where we submitted it. Hopefully, it gets published at some point. Uh, yeah, and QGIS Bailey is a good free software to practice GIS with. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, is AI a threat to urban planning careers, i.e., will it take our jobs? That's a fascinating question. I think the answer with AI right now is we don't know enough yet. Um, we, we've been playing around with AI for sure here in our department, and we find that AI does a pretty good job of writing city plans, quite honestly. <laughs> uh, it can actually do a good job drafting certain policies. Like you can say, like, write me a policy about sort of increasing the amount of share of people who ride bikes or whatever, and it'll write some good policies. Because honestly, a lot of what AI does is it kind of samples from other plans and kind of melds something together that sounds reasonable. 
Um, but I think a lot of what planning is isn't so much the writing of policies, but it's the community engagement aspect. Not all planners engage with the community, um, but a lot of it is about consensus building, meeting with local elected officials, and sort of the human aspects. And I don't think we're currently not at a point where AI can sort of uh, sort of negotiate <laughs> with a planning commission member about a project approval for a building yet, for example, or something like that. So. Uh, we still have some job security, um, you know, uh, but I can't predict the future. Um, let's see, tangent type question. What kind of people, degrees, jobs do city planners work with most besides government? Uh, Grinhawk asks. Great question. Uh, that's one of the great things about city planners is that you work with so many different types of people. Um, so uh, you work with anybody involved in building buildings, right? So you're going to work with architects, you're going to work with uh, land developers, real estate developers, you're going to work with engineers and in infrastructure, civil, transportation. Uh, you will work with planners of different backgrounds. You're going to work with economists potentially, right? Um, and then depending on where you, uh, sort of where you end up, if you're working in um, sort, of, sort of current planning, like you're just sort of like uh, doing permit work for local governments, you might work with anybody who wants to come in and get a new fence or <laughs> or add on to their house. So, uh, you know, you could do a lot of different stuff. Um, let's see. Um, do you have any thoughts, insights of getting a degree in urban planning uh, outside the U.S. and how do, how do degrees differ from country to country? I'm thinking of taking a degree in Tokyo specifically. My understanding of this is that um, in general, uh, planning is taught uh, very much at the national context. Like, um, if you get a, a planning degree here, here in the United States, you're going to learn a lot about U.S. planning. And in fact, depending on what state you go to, uh, you know, your, your university is in, you might learn a lot about that state's planning. But state to state in the United States, planning is different, and certainly country to country. Um, so if you get a, a degree in one, one country and you want to practice in the other, another country, it might be challenging. You might be outcompeted by people who have specific um, specific experience. If you really want to like be a planner in Japan, getting your degree in Tokyo makes a whole lot of sense in my mind um, because you're going to learn the local context much more than you would here in the United States. Um, is civil engineering a good path to go down if I hope to become an urban planner? I mean, I think obviously majoring in city planning is better uh, a better bet, Ma. Um, you're going to have just sort of more opportunities. But again, you could find a job in a job in civil engineering. You're certainly going to touch planning. And depending on the firm or, or um, local government you work for, you might be able to sort of transition yourself more and more into a planning role. Uh, it's certainly a related field, so it's not impossible. Um, how do you deal with engaging with communities that have been treated badly by the city in the past? Things promised and not delivered or community hurt by loss of business after a parking loss. Um, yeah, I mean, that's absolutely, a city, as a city planner who worked as a consultant, we would come into communities and lead planning processes uh, in communities that had sort of a negative relationship with the city in the past. And it was a challenge. And I think the only thing you can do is like slowly rebuild trust little by little. And that means sort of under promising and over delivering when possible because they're sort of used to the opposite. Uh, reaching out, meeting with people early, making it clear that the community that's been undervalued or underserved is actually important. And then demonstrating that by taking action uh, positively, but that's a that's a whole that's a whole big issue. Um, city planning jobs is a base on which you uh, on who you based on who you know in government. They don't teach you that in planning school. It depends on where you are, Jules. Um, you know, in 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 our experience, um, a lot because he, I'm here at Cal Poly. We have Cal Poly planners in uh, municipalities across the across the state and country. So, um, you know, we find that our, our graduates end up being pretty easy to find jobs because there's oftentimes a Cal Poly graduate uh, at the place they're working for and they know the degree program, they know what they come out knowing. Um, and it's, you know, so it is sort of who you know, but like by going to a planning program, you're going to sort of be plugged into a network of alums um, and sort of better sort of ready to sort of tackle the job market. Uh, do you know the difference between California planning versus the rest of the U.S. Peter asks, yeah, California planning is harder. Uh, if you can plan in California, we say you can plan anywhere. Uh, you know, California has a reputation for having more regulations than anywhere, and that's certainly true here in the United States, in the planning uh, process uh, and planning field as well. Um, so, uh, you know, we always think that if students who are coming from outside of California to a California school for planning, uh, they get a really good education because it's uh, rigorous just because it has to be because we sort of sort of plan on training California planners. But then if you want to practice somewhere else, you're maybe over prepared for the job, which is never a bad thing. 
Um, is there any jobs after getting a PhD in planning? Yeah, I'm, I'm in one right now, peer domination. Uh, most people who get a PhD in city planning uh, strive to become a professor. Um, so the, if you want to teach city planning, uh, there are two routes that I see most commonly, and I've done them both. Start a YouTube channel uh, and become a professor. Um, and you need a PhD in most cases to become a professor. You can become a full-time lecturer, which means you sort of teach, but you don't do research uh, without a PhD. Um, but if you want to get a PhD just to get a PhD, I might advise you against it um, because it's a five-year process um, and jobs are competitive. So like if you're interested in pure research, there are research think tanks and things, but those are very, very competitive uh, to get jobs there. Um, and they often take from only like the best P like planning schools. It's uh, and uh, otherwise people become professors. So it's a really arduous journey, uh, the PhD process, and you certainly don't need a PhD to become a planner. Uh, and in fact, sometimes I think people think of it as a negative, like you're an egghead who can't actually get involved in the day-to-day -day process of planning. Um, okay, how much will, will say will I get on what I work on? Say if I want to plan walkable cities, but I'm stuck designing another suburb, what do I do in that situation? Uh, Ma asks. I'm sorry, there's so many questions. I'm trying to, I'm just picking ran random ones. And I know I just answered one of yours already, Ma. Um, yeah, so that's a challenge. Um, there's always going to be sort of these ethical conundrums in planning. Um, and I think the, the best you can do is uh, be sort of an educator and advocate within the role that you have, um, especially as somebody who maybe has a degree in planning. Uh, you can rely on your expertise and, and sort of say that you have, some, you have some expertise in this and that this is not the best course of action. Make the case. Ultimately, the community and then your governing body, whether it be a, a you know city council or county board of supervisors or whatever it is in your country, makes the final decision. Um, so you know you have ways to influence that decision through what you write in your staff report. Um, that's what the, the the document you present to a governing body to, that they read before making a final decision on a project. Um, you can go out in the community uh, and sort of you know be be a neutral listener, but also give people uh, the information they need to make a, a sound decision. Um, so. You know, luckily, um, I think we're in an era here where people are more inclined to sort of follow progressive planning practices. It's not definitely not true everywhere in every project. I don't want to, but um, you know, I've been in this field uh, for 20 years in some capacity, starting as a planning student, and things are getting better. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. I'm, I love all the answers to this in the comments. Keep answering in the comments as well, because I don't have the only. Uh, uh, I'm not the only. Um, uh, perspective here. So um, let's see. Um, so worth going further than a master's degree for a private job sector outside of your uh, outside of necessity. Does it add more value to your degree? You do not need to go f further than a master's degree in the planning field. I would not do it um, unless you want to be a professor. Uh, in the USA, is there demand for planners with degrees from other countries? Or would that be seen as a disadvantage? It's sort of the same thing as what I mentioned before. Um, if you ha come from a degree with another, uh, another from another country, you have to really show that you understand the local laws and regulations and history and context of U.S. planning. Again, that might be helpful if you like get an internship somewhere before you find the full-time job uh, somewhere in the United States. Uh, but then again, like a lot of American planners sort of see us as being backward in our ways a little bit. And if you're coming from a country that is seen as having more progressive planning uh, than us, it could be a benefit. I don't know, but I would say that. Um, for, for mo the most part, I would prefer if I was on the hiring uh, uh, side of things, and I have been, a U.S. degree is seen as more valuable for a U.S. job. Uh, is burnout real? I've heard of a few planners getting disenfranchised and st stuck doing boring projects instead of planning they're passionate about. Yeah, burnout can be real. Um, I think the nice thing about planning is that it's a big field. So if you don't like the kind of planning you're doing, you might be able to pivot to something you like better. A lot of the times when I hear people say they're burning out, a lot of it's folks who are working the planning counter in sort of current planning. So that's people who are like literally sort of taking in uh, applications for uh, new developments, uh, looking for people looking for permits, and they have to sort of apply the zoning code and the, and the comprehensive plan and make sure that everything is kosher uh, and get that project through. Um, and that kind of kind of get wear on people uh, over time. I was a long range planner, which meant I, I did like comprehensive plans, like plans designed for the next 30 years and they're really broad. And I found it to be like endlessly interesting work and I didn't I don't think I would have burnt out doing it. Um, you know, the, the problems with long range planning is that it takes a long time to see your work actually mean anything because it's long range. Uh, but at the very least, I wasn't frustrated on a daily basis uh, like other places. So, you know, burnout can happen in any field, uh, but sometimes that just means if you're getting burnt out in one area, maybe move somewhere else. Maybe go from private sector to public sector, maybe find a new specialty, that kind of thing. Um, 
Uh, why is water wastewater objectively the best branch of civil engineering? I have a good friend who's a water wastewater engineer, so I can't disagree with that. Um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, I just graduated with my urban planning degree at 33, so you can do it. Absolutely. There's no age cap. Um, let's see. What background do the economists you or planners you know have worked with tend to have? Uh, they specialize in urban planning. or Yeah, so uh, a lot of those folks end up sort of what we call economic development planners. Uh, so they uh, sometimes they come from a, uh, an economic mostly they come from an economics background. Some do come with city planning degrees and have somehow specialized in economic development in their program. Um, but yeah, I would say like economist uh, economics. Let's see. Um, can a single family home operate a small business? You gotta check your zoning code about that, Adam. Yeah, bizarre. Yeah, also has the same answer there. Uh, I'm a little behind. Um, any other questions? I want to make sure that I'm hitting everybody. I can scroll back up. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, Alex, I'm scrolling up a little bit. Hello from UCLA. All right, Alex. How long would you recommend after waiting after, waiting after a bachelor's to apply for a um, master's program? I'd say in an ideal world, um, you would go out and work for a while before you get your master's degree to determine if it's really worth it. Um, you know, master's degrees can absolutely be worth it. Um, I have one. Can't, can't, can't fault that. But you might want to go out and work for a while if you're assuming you're in the field of city planning and determine if the employers that you're working for really value that or need that. And uh, I know so many talented uh, planners who were project managers and beyond who uh, only had a bachelor's degree in city planning and it served them well and they were did not need to get a master's. So I'd say at least go out there, get some experience. It might also help you decide like kind of what your specialty is and then you can use your master's to sort of uh, further hone your specialty too. Uh, is there math in urban planning? Not too much. Not too much. Um, if you're not a math person, city planning might be this, the, the way for you to go, particularly if you're good with people uh, and sort of like to do sort of community engagement and things. Uh, typically, uh, a master's, uh, sorry, a bachelor's or master's program might require some like pre-calc or calc kind of, you know, at the undergrad level. And you might have to take a statistics class, but that's about it. Um, let's see. What's the degrees about for someone who wants to go into real estate development, Ben asks. That's a great question. Um, so we have folks here who get a degree in city planning um, and uh, they minor in real estate development. So some places will have a real estate development minor uh, and that's a great way to get involved. Uh, other folks go straight to like a business school and a lot of business schools have like a school of real estate. Uh, so there's, there's separate real estate programs that you can get a degree in. Uh, city planning with a minor in real estate uh, or business, like an MBA type of, uh, of a degree. So uh, D, it's going good, going good. Um, Sorry. Uh, oh, really interesting. Jared's question about. Oh, okay, I'm trying to scroll up to Jared's question about activated minded business and planning. I don't know. Post it again. Um, let's see. Uh, thanks. Could you elaborate on your grad experience at the University of Oregon if you recommend it over PSU's master's program? Uh, Steven, good question. Um, I think they're both great programs. Um, I think PSU probably has like the more of the cachet or reputation than the University of Oregon's, um, just because it's located in Portland um, and has like uh, a lot of the uh, students get jobs uh, sort of in the in the planning bureaucracy of Portland, which is a fun place to work. Um, but the University of Oregon, I found to be a fantastic program as well. Uh, it really did prepare me well for being a city planner. I had no complaints with the program. The professors were excellent, loved the professors, um, and they did a really good job of sort of mixing like the, the theory and research with the practical side. Um, and we had to do some actual planning work and things in the program. Um, so that's really good. And I just wanna um, say that like, when you're thinking about going into planning programs, do an evaluation, like read up on what um, what classes do you have to take in that major? Are the classes interesting to you? Look at the professors. Are they doing work that's interesting to you, right? Do they have an internship requirement or not? Uh, do they have studio classes that get you out working with real clients? And one of the things I do here at Cal Poly is in your final year, both as a master's student and undergrad, you have to work uh, as a, basically in my planning firm. I, it's like I, we, I teach a studio where there's a real planning client. Right now we're working in the city of Palo Alto, working on a vision plan for sort of new housing in Silicon Valley. And we are running community outreach. We are meeting with stakeholders and we're drafting up a vision plan for that area. Um, so some, pl some programs have that type of thing, some don't. Uh, some are more sort of academic focused, some are more practical focused. Like I always consider like I went to Berkeley, Berkeley is great on theory, they're, they're super strong planning theory uh, orga uh, organization, 
Cal Poly here is strong with the practical side of things. You get a lot of design background, a lot of GIS, a lot of sort of time working in communities. Just two different two different sides of the of the field. Um, so really look into and do research on what kind of program fits your interests. Um, I'm almost done with my bachelor's in poli sci with an urban planning minor. What master would help me along the city planner path? Get a master's in city planning. Uh, go find a, a degree program. Uh, so I should also mention that, um, and let me show, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can be fancy here for a second. Um, uh, okay, I'm switching screens. Uh, so if you go to planningaccreditationboard.org up here, um, you can see all the accredited programs. So this is in the United States only, but almost every country has some version of this. Um, so it's a list of all accredited city planning programs in the United States by university. So you can see where there are programs that might be useful for you. Um, and these are accredited programs. So accredited programs are sort of vetted by the, this planning accreditation board. So they're sort of, you sort of assume that there's a minimum level of quality and consistency in what you learn. Um, I did my undergrad actually at a non-accredited bachelor's program. It was a, uh, a Bachelor of Urban Studies at Cornell. Um, it was more of an urban sociology. It wasn't quite as practical as some of these accredited programs might be. But I also found it to be absolutely fascinating and a wonderful program too. So I don't want to say that accredited programs are the end-all be-all. But certainly if you're looking at a master's degree, I would say stick to the accredited list. But bachelor's degree, you have more flexibility. All right. Okay. Let's see. Uh, how Silicon Valley people reacted to your plans? Anything different than usual? We're in the early stages, uh, but the general, um, what we've heard from our first round of outreach is no new housing. So we're, we're in for an uphill battle. Um, what can I do with an undergrad in city planning versus a master's? Um, ideally, you're going to get the same kind of jobs. Um, city planning, master's, and, and bachelor's students, they both get jobs as city planners. Um, it depends on your university and the programs. Like some here at Cal Poly, our bachelor's and master's programs are fairly similar, like almost too similar, uh, to the point where we don't allow our bachelor's students to get a master's here as well because they would learning so much of the same things. And we treat it the same. Uh, ideally, a master's program is going to go a little bit more in depth. They assume that it, coming in, is, since you already have a bachelor's degree, sometimes the discussion is a little bit deeper, the concepts are a little bit trickier, the readings are more, the assignments are more, it's a little bit more rigorous. Um, so, you know, you, a potential employer might value the master's degree slightly more. Um, but if you go to a good solid bachelor's program, you're not going to have a hard time finding a job, at least in this economy right now. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, studying in Brisbane, Australia, would you recommend doing a master's if you're doing honors in your bachelor? I don't know what that means. Uh, if you're doing honors in your bachelor. I'm so sorry. Maybe if there's anyone in Australia or experience with Australia planning in there in the chat who can help. Um, let's see. Um, you kind of have an accent when they speak in your, your vids, especially when you pronounce the Vancouver. Yeah, I know. I For some reason, I can't pronounce the word Vancouver right. Uh, that, that, I know, is super cringy. I'm so sorry. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Are designing skills, Photoshop, et cetera, essential in the practice? Finish a BCS in spatial planning, currently doing environmental and infrastructure planning. I'm worried that I won't possess skills. Alex, that's a good question. Um, it depends. So uh, we're seeing, um, from what we're hearing from employers, the design skills aren't the, the highest uh, sort of thing that people need. Uh, what, what we're hearing uh, most is that people want to see uh, planners coming out with strong background in writing and in sort of oral communication. Can you get up in front of folks and speak? Um, do you have a good like analytical skills? Can you like actually sort of write and apply policies and zoning codes? Uh, those are some of the skills we're looking at. Um, so the, the design skills in, in a lot of the planning jobs are sort of nice to have, and they can be differentiators. Um, so here in Cal Poly, for example, we um, have a design track. So students do learn uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, even a little bit of CAD and SketchUp. Um, but uh, not every job needs that. Um, so you might be OK. Um, let's see. Would it be a good idea to get a BS in comp sci than getting a master's in planning? Can they be contacted to the same job? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Like I mentioned, 
when you go to a master's degree in city planning, it almost doesn't matter what your undergrad is. They'll take you if you sort of have a good application. Um, you don't need to have a related degree. And can the comp sci degree be helpful? Maybe it depends on your it depends on your uh, what you're interested in. Um, there are sort of ways if you're super interested in GIS, uh, if you're interested in things like digital twin, uh, sort of scenario analysis, advanced stuff like that. You can absolutely use scripting and things to develop sort of these sorts of tools and processes. Um, but like computer science isn't like what I would consider to be sort of like the most uh, complementary uh, degree. But it absolutely can be helpful depending on what you're doing. Um, let's see. Is it better to get a master's or job experience? Uh, do you have a bachelor's first? That's the question. Um, if you can get job experience, um, that's, I think, beneficial because you're actually earning money uh, while gaining experience. That might be helpful to employers. Whereas well, if you go get a master's degree, you're paying money <laughs> and not earning money potentially. Um, so if you can get a if you can get a, get to a full time job through work experience, go for it. But if you uh, if you really need the the degree, uh, get the degree. Uh, let's see. What sort of references should I use if I'm far, pretty far removed from my university? I have one from a planning community, but I heard professors are preferred. Micah, uh, like, is this for like a master's degree? I mean, go with employers. Like, honestly. Um, and I will say, like. Um, you know, it depends on where you go, but in general, we're finding that across the United States, at least, we're seeing a decline in master's enrollment or sort of applications for planning, despite the fact that we're sort of seeing an industry that still needs more planners. I mentioned this towards the top that like, we're not, the planning schools are essentially not generating enough planners for what the industry needs right now, um, which is a good thing for uh, for you, pers uh, you know, for sort of prospective planning students. Um, so, um, so yeah, so like, I would say it's like not as hard as it maybe used to be to get in uh, to a planning program <laughs> because uh, schools are sort of hurting for applicants. Uh, and uh, uh, the way it works is like we sort of as programs live or die by the students. If we don't have any students, we don't have a program. So um, not I don't want to say it's like easy to get into or anything, but like, um, you know, finding finding just your sort of people who can vouch for your work abilities. Professors are fine if you can get them. But uh, what, whoever can tell you know, tell the app, the the people reading your application about your sort of qualifications uh, and your sort of like, you know, ability to do the program will help. Um, all right, let's see. Um, what's the male to female ratio in the industry? Would you say the, uh, what's the, uh, what would you say the insight of the women uh, would bring something unique to this field? That's interesting. So from, this is from my experience um, that the old guard uh, is still a lot of old dudes, um, definitely, like old white guys sort of traditionally dominated this profession. But uh, more and more, I'm seeing that this is a 50-50 field. Um, looking at our applicants, or sorry, our, our classes here at Cal Poly, for example, um, you know, years ago, it was it was male dominated. And then, it, I don't know, like 10 years ago, it flipped. And there were more women in our program than men. And we were just, we all noticed that, like, for the first time in a long time this year, our incoming class has more men than women. Um, but, like, it's changing. So uh, we obviously, uh, we want to have a planning profession that reflects the communities we work in. Um, and as a profession, we sort of acknowledge that we need to be 50-50 on, uh, on gender. We also need to be better about recruiting people of color. Right now, um, it's primarily, like, more white of a profession than it should be, just looking at the demographics of the US, for example. Um, so we're always trying to work at, again, being, uh, we, you want to have planners sort of representative of the communities you work in, so uh, that's that's important. But in general, gender-wise, if you go, if you're a woman coming into a planning program, you're gonna find uh, many other women uh, by your side. Uh, let's see, uh, do you see the lack of a master's students trend being a long run or short run issue as of now, if uh, you can tell at all? It feels like a long-term issue. Um, so we do see short-term spikes. Like anytime there's a recession, uh, we see more grad grad students applying, right? Getting out, of, like maybe they got laid off or the the jobs uh, the job market's scary coming out of bachelor's, so they just run straight into a master's degree. So absolutely, all of our biggest classes have been sort of short-term related. But we're also just seeing us like even outside of uh, the sort of the recessionary trends, we're seeing a slow decline industry-wide and sort of uh, across the United States where we're seeing fewer master's students applying. And we're all not sure why exactly, uh, because again, we're planning is still in demand. Like we're still hearing from the other side that we want more planners. 
Um, and that's why uh, a lot of schools are starting to think about uh, how do we accommodate uh, students um, by having sort of online programs, evening programs, so folks can still work. I think we're seeing that there's increasing concern over the cost of university uh, degrees and things like that. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, the University of Florida has a fully accredited online program. Other schools I know are headed that direction are looking at ways to make it more flexible, but it's sort of an institutional shift uh, and uh, we're in a big old institution in academia, so it's going to take a little while to get there. Um, let's see. Um, are there urban planning jobs that involve more standing up and talking to people than sitting down staring at a computer? Uh, Andrew asks. Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, there are uh, absolutely jobs. Uh, and I th th like it depends on what. So like in transportation planning, for example, there are people who do modeling, who do sit in front of the computer all the time, just like modeling traffic scenarios. And there are other people who are out there sort of running, um, you know, uh, public engagement processes around corridor redesigns. Right. And you're sort of at meetings. You're in the field more. Um, I will say that, like the the balance is probably more desk job, uh, at least in my experience working with planners. Um, but you do get out. Uh, I would say like it's not like say like uh, maybe somebody working in the tech industry where you're just really like a code monkey or something like that. Like um, you know, in my experience, I was uh, out at meetings. You do site visits. You do things like that. Like you get out of the office here and there enough that like it feels like it breaks up the monotony. Um, let's see. Um, uh, okay, I have a master's degree in urban planning. I've never used it. I would like to start working. I need help. Uh, Yolanda, um, yeah, I don't know how old your degree is or how long you've been away from it. Um, but um, if you, I would say, start rebuilding the resume around that a little bit. Like if, if you can start volunteering, uh, you know, like for like an activist organization, finding out a way to sort of get an internship or something, get something else in your resume that signals to employers that you are currently interested in planning again. Um, you know, that could be really helpful as well. Um, again, just demonstrating interest in like when you're, when somebody's looking at your resume, they just want to make sure that it makes sense, right? Like, okay, you have a degree in planning. Why have you been gone for so long? Like, can you, can you explain why? And can you show that you're sort of re-engaging in the field again? And I think that would really help. Um, okay. Consultants can do desk 99% of the time if you're into that, Willie says. Yeah, if you're into that. Again, I was a consultant planner and I was out in the field all the time. Uh, and in fact, I had to do long drives to distant communities I was working in. So I felt like I was out of the office a lot too. Um, hi, I, I, hey, I, thought, I saw that you have a degree in architecture. Could you please explain how you obtained it? I'm pursuing a master's degree in urban planning in France and would like to switch to architecture. Um, I... Yeah, I was getting a degree in architecture, um, and then I decided halfway through I didn't want to be an architect. Um, so I just talked to my professors in my college. So I was the, luckily, architecture and planning are often housed in the same uh, college or, or school. Um, and then I just said, hey, can I switch? Um, I Some places will make you reapply. Like you have to apply again to that program. Mine didn't, um, and I could essentially just start taking classes and flip over most uh, degree programs and departments are eager for more students for all the reasons I just mentioned, even architecture programs. So they should be willing to work with you to make the switch. Uh, ooh, yeah, Caltrans is hurting for planners. If you have a degree, you can apply. Yes, California, come to California. There are jo planning jobs uh, in, even in the state government. Um, yeah, Andrew says, a master's degree costs 60 to 70 K. I think it's likely the main barrier to more applications. Absolutely. My college loans just started, uh, I have started paying them again. And uh, uh, it's not cheap uh, to, to get a degree. Uh, so absolutely, that is a barrier in there. And that's something to think about, too. Um, some universities offer uh, assistance. So uh, when you're thinking about applying, look at uh, scholarships they have available. Some larger universities, so what we call R1 research institutions, think about like all the schools with sort of big college football programs or sort of research institutions. Um, they might have, uh, you know, if you're a, a particularly promising applicant or have a compelling case, they may have uh, be able to give you a stipend and a tuition remission, which means you don't, you don't have to pay tuition and make, can make money. So when I was a master's student, um, I went in with no scholarship, but then I pretty quickly got a job, like you can get a research assistant job or a teaching assistant job. And at these bigger research institutions, they will pay your tuition and a salary while you do that. Um, I'm hearing that's increasingly uncommon. I graduated 10 years ago, um, but there are, 
but one of the things you should absolutely do when you're considering applying is talk to somebody, talk to a professor, talk to administration, and see what they can do uh, to sweeten the pot for you. Um, a lot of these places, again, are sort of uh, have fewer applicants than previous years, but might sell the same pot of money, so that could be to your advantage. Uh, any fully funded PhD program recommendations that focus on spatial analysis and urban design? Uh, Rixton X. Well, I come from exactly that, so I can recommend one. I went to UC Berkeley um, and got my, I was fully funded, so I got um, for five years, I had no, I paid no tuition and made a meager stipend doing um, urban design. Uh, so that was my focus when I was there. Um, and it was a good program. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I felt like I got my money's worth because I wasn't paying anything. Um, and it was a, a, a Berkeley's a solid program with a really good reputation. Um, we found that we would sort of compete with urban design folks who also wanted to go to MIT. Uh, MIT, we found, uh, also offered tuition remission and more of a salary or stipend. Um, so those are two well-known, regarded programs that do sort of spatial analysis and urban design, and it's fully funded that I can tell you about. Um, all right, let's see. Yeah, people are mentioning that employers may have tuition waiver programs. Absolutely. Um, you should ask your employer if you're sort of currently working in a program if they will pay for your master's degree. Um, bit of a strange question. Are civil servants restricted from participating in planning activism in the states? That's a great question. Um, and I don't know if there, I don't believe there's one answer to this question. Um, I know there are some folks who do engage in some light activism uh, with their job. It depends on your job, right? Like if you are sort of a well-known ad, uh, advocate or activist in a community and you're also trying to be a city planner, it could be a conflict of interest or you'd have a very hard time doing your job because a lot of it's about building trust with community members and if they believe that you're not, they're not gonna, you're not gonna listen to them because you're an, advo uh, an advocate for something else, that can be a challenge. That said, I know of people who do it absolutely, they do it sometimes above board and sometimes under the radar. I've had people say, uh, I don't know, like I think it was like, I don't know if they're Strong Towns or just some other organization, they were like tabling and they said, don't tell, don't tell my employer that I'm here. Um, so I don't know, it depends totally on what level, what how much politics you deal with in your day-to-day -day life. Um, so, okay. Yeah, Janae says, teaching assistantships tend to cover most of your tuition, so that's really good if offered. Absolutely. The downside of a teaching assistantship I found was that like you might have it for one semester, but not the next semester. You have to keep finding them. Um, I got lucky with research assistantships because a lot of times the professor will have like a research grant that lasts multiple years, and they can uh, keep paying you for longer. Um, let's see. <coughs> uh, yeah, I'm studying the Netherlands, and right now lecturers are always put in the U.S. is how not to do planning in the practice. That's true, um, and that's not because planners here in the U.S. don't want to do better planning, uh, but we're working with communities who have a different idea for what an ideal city should be like. Um, I'm going to go to urban planning so I can go do a master's for transport planning here in Canada. Okay, that's great. Uh, let's see. Um, if I'm currently in GIS, should I consider a master's in planning or should I stick with a GIS for master's, asked David. Depends on how much you like GIS. Um, Obviously, uh, people who have GIS skills are in demand in the field, um, and uh, lots of big firms love people who have sort of that specific skill set. So if you love GIS, you might have, have a good time finding a job. If you are sort of more interested in city planning broadly, you don't want to be chained to working in ARC or in every software, uh, consider broadening your horizons. It's totally up to you. I know personally, uh, I. I sort of tailored my ability in ArcGIS to be good enough to get a job and competent to do tasks, but I didn't want to be too good at it such that I was the my um, firm's like GIS go-to person to like troubleshoot because I hate working with ArcGIS software because it's so buggy. Um, so that was my balance, um, but everybody's balance in GIS can be a little bit different. Uh, hi, Dave. Is there any GIS open course recommendation? That's a good question. I mean, there's lots of uh, lots of YouTube videos out there about how to do it, but I, 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 it's a little scattershot. Um, Plan Edison in courses is, uh, they're not free, but they can be sort of affordable on a subscription basis. Uh, and they sort of teach GIS from a planning background, and I believe they have GIS courses um, available. Uh, so planedison.com is a good spot. Uh, what is the best school for urban planning in California, asked Brian. And the answer, of course, is Cal Poly San Luis Obispo because I teach here. Um, but no, um, 
the idea for what the best school is is uh, a little bit different. Um, it depends on what you're interested in and what you want to do. I do think that Cal Poly is the best school in California if you're interested in becoming a city planner. Uh, we have an accredited bachelor's program, which is pretty rare in the state. Um, we're really good at putting our students in jobs as city planners. Like uh, It's um, astounding how good we are at that. Um, and we our alumni network across the state is gigantic. So um, if you're really interested in becoming a city planner, Cal Poly is the place. If you're really interested in sort of thinking more broadly about cities or other issues, like you sort of would thrive, say, in a, a school like a Berkeley or a UCLA or a USC, they all have fantastic planning programs as well. Um, so those are more sort of larger UC schools where the professors are more research focused. Here at Cal Poly, we're more teaching focused, so we get to know our students a little bit better. And I think we honestly offer more direct uh, education that's better. Uh, but Berkeley, you're sort of going to be around students that are just like, you know, whip smart and like able to like, uh, you know, like think deeply about topics. And we don't always get into the the, the deeper thinking here because we're much more practical focused. Um, but like other schools like us in the state are like Pomona is great, Cal Poly Pomona. So, but how biased am I for Cal Poly? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, guys, I would be, I would be, it would be wrong of me not to be biased. Like I am actually actively teaching classes here. I'm contributing to our curriculum changes. Like I have an ideal planning program in my head and here at Cal Poly, I'm trying to implement it. So uh, of course I think Cal Poly is the best, uh, but we do have the results to back it up. So I don't think I'm totally just BSing you. Um, Let's see. I go to Cal Poly Pomona for urban regional planning. Is it good? Yeah, I hear good things about Pomona. Uh, you know, it's a good program. And, and I would say, guys, in general, uh, if you go to an accredited program, you're going to get a good education. Uh, there aren't really sort of best or least best. You can look at the graduate school rankings that they put out. I think Planet is in rankings. They say the top 10 graduate programs in the country. I don't know. I find it all to be pretty meaningless. This is somebody who has got has multiple degrees from people from schools who have been in the top 10 before. Um, but also not in the top 10. Uh, there's not a lot of difference between the programs. Um, honestly, I would always recommend if you know where you want to be a planner, go get a degree there. Like if you want to be a planner in Oregon, go to an Oregon school. If you want to be a planner in Texas, go to a Texas school because you're going to learn about that state's planning process and you're going to meet people who have your degree. Like your alumni connections are going to be better there. So uh, just think about that. Like don't worry about sort of chasing like the best prestigious degree. Like in general, I find that city planners aren't super uh, worried about prestige of program. They're more worried about like, you know, did you actually learn what you need to learn to start your job? Um, the only time prestige kind of matters is if you're getting a PhD. And again, I would highly recommend against that unless you really, really want to be a professor. Um, let's see, do I have any thoughts on the University of Oregon's undergraduate planning degree, Samuel? I don't have actually have a lot of experience with the undergraduate program. I don't think it's accredited. Uh, so it's probably more urban studies. I did the master's program. Um, if they're taught by the same professors, I found the professors to be fantastic and you'll learn a lot. Um, so it could be a really good experience. Um, let's see, Nishil, do you know if there's a possibility to get a job as a city regional planet, planning uh, uh, government in the US as a Canadian using an H-1B TN visa? That's a, that is a specific question I don't have the answer to. I'm sorry to say, uh, so sorry. Um, let's see. Uh, What's the urban planning school in New Jersey? There's a bunch of them. I think Rutgers is probably the best known one. But then there's like even like, um, was it Rutgers Camden has, I think, at least a public policy program. I don't know, people can list them. Uh, you can go to the uh, Planning Accreditation Board uh, website and find more. Uh, have I, I attended Esri's user conference in San Diego? No, I don't have any attend plans to attend in the future. I don't want to host a session. I don't want to get too into GIS. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I'm a landscape architecture student in Scotland, but I'm interested in urban planning. I think about doing an urban design master's in Europe. Go for it. Uh, I think it's great. Yeah, Rutgers, Rutgers, Rutgers uh, for Jersey. Um, I am reaching an hour of talking. Um, um, ooh, do you want to be an urban planner in New England? Do I live in Amherst? I know a faculty member at UMass Amherst who's fantastic. So uh, go there. Uh, you can learn from uh, Camille. She's great. Um, Let's see, what do you think about uh, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill's urban planning masters? Heard great things about Chapel Hill. It might be a top 10 school. Uh, again, I told you rankings don't matter, but I think they rank pretty highly. I, I know um, faculty there or sort of who were previously there and they're super high quality. 
Um, so, you know, again, so much of your experience in your planning program is going to be things like what classes are offered and how good are your professors. And for good uh, sort of depends on their area of interest. How dedicated are they to teaching? Do they have connections that can help you sort of navigate the job market? So all things to consider while you're considering a program. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, oh, sorry, Jarrett. How well do you think activist minded folks fit into the professional planning world? I sort of, I sort of did uh, tackle this one. Um, I think that um, you can be fulfilled being an activist minded planner in a professional role. Um, the benefits of becoming a city planner is that you get to do planning forty plus hours a week. It's your day job, right? You can get paid a family supportive amount of money generally to do something you're interested in. Um, that's not a small thing, right? Being an activist is absolutely amazing. There's many ways to be an activist. A lot of people do it sort of on the side. Uh, being a planner means that you get to do this job full time. You get to make generally a pretty middle class wages with benefits and you get to be at the center of everything. Now, being an, you're not going to sort of be an activist in the same way as like sort of you know, starting a YouTube channel or like, you know, going to or starting protests or going and giving testimony at city council, but you get to do influence in other ways, right? Being at the center of this means that you're sort of deciding who you're convening with, how you're presenting this information, how you're framing a project. Like there's so many ways to influence the process. So being inside the process is a different form of activism. Uh, it can be trickier and more nuanced, but also fulfilling, and you can make a living doing it. So it's not a bad thing. Um, let's see. Um, do I have any advice for the application process, process for a graduate program in urban planning? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I would say just just show that you're a, sort of a, a good thinker. Again, we don't sort of look for specific majors or people with specific backgrounds, but we want to look, for, we're sort of looking for people who can sort of think integratively. Like, can you sort of like work cross, across disciplines? Are you a bit of a generalist? Can you sort of think critically about issues? Are you in sort of thinking about how, are you sort of empathetic? Like, can you sort of think about how a, a, a decision would affect a, a group different from your own? Like, those are sort of the skills that we're looking for when we're um, sort of bringing folks into a graduate program. And we'll teach you the skills. We'll teach you the rest. Like you don't have to give us your chops. Like I've read every planning book ever. Um, I mean, of course, like sort of internship experience doesn't hurt. It demonstrates your level of interest because we want we people with high interest. But in general, like, are you just a good critical thinker? Uh, writing writing also helps. Can you write well? Can you write your application well? Uh, all right. Um, when do you get uh, to pick a concentration at Cal Poly? Um, Emilio asks, um, yeah, you can pick it. I, we recommend you picking it early on so you can get the quest, the, the courses uh, figured out like on your schedule and stay, still stay on our sort of flow chart for graduation. Um, but our concentrations aren't super like rigid um, and they don't require a lot of courses. So we're pretty flexible. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So Bazaar says, uh, if you have an opportunity to study abroad, please do. Absolutely. One of my most formative experiences when I was an undergrad in planning was I did a semester abroad in Rome. I still think about that time. I have a literally have a, I'm staring at a giant map of Rome in my office. Uh, it, it was fantastic. So, um, okay. Will this live stream be safe somewhere on your channel? Colin asks. I normally don't, but I think this one I will just because I think it was generally of broad interest to people. Uh, and a lot of these questions apply, hopefully, to a wide variety of people. So I will do my best to keep that on the channel. The only reason I might not is if somehow the algorithm decides that they don't like people posting live streams or something like that. But I think we're OK. Um, what about going back to school and starting a CBR pre-program at 53, Michael asks. Uh, we have people certainly uh, with graying hair in our own master's program here at Cal Poly, um, and we are happy to have them. Uh, it and I, I haven't. We don't have like a high enough number that I can, can tell you like like the age affected their job market prospects, but we don't expect it to. Um, so uh, I would say like if you're interested, um, apply and again reach out to the department, see what what their experience has been with sort of uh, uh, students of advanced age. But I find um, the more the more experience folks have outside of school when they come into a master program, the more interesting they are and the more will, like exciting I am to sort of teach them. So, okay, let's see. 
Maybe I'm listed with a post to the link. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll make it public for a while. I, I don't see any reason why not. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. That's true. Somebody said, Micah says, yeah, I got my master's so I can be a better activist. There's a limit to what you can learn outside the system. Absolutely. Though I will say that uh, my unofficial, uh, my unofficial um, mission statement for City Beautiful is to take what you learn in a planning degree and give it out to the general public. <laughs> so uh, I'm actually working on a video series that will be coming out probably next summer. Was literally a video textbook, like a city planning textbook you can watch, uh, and it'll be on my channel. So if, if you're not subscribed, subscribe so you can check that out. But I really, my, my whole point is to sort of democratize city planning knowledge so that we can all be better activists. Um, and I take sort of taking my institutional knowledge that I have as a planner and an academic and giving it out to everyone. So that's what I'm doing. Um, why did you decide to switch from an architecture major to a city planning major? Darth Vader asks. I, um, I decided to switch because I actually I thoroughly enjoyed architecture school, some of my most fun times ever. But I just realized about myself, I don't, I don't have that sort of detail brain. Like I don't want to sit down and design door jams and like that kind of stuff all day long. Like I really do want to think about this building scale and out and not the building scale and into the level of detail. Like so there are some folks who are brilliant architects who can just get into the detail level and design brilliant things. And that wasn't me. I was interested in sort of how does this building relate to sort of our greater society. And I, so uh, that's why I decided to move on. Uh, what did I do for my thesis? Uh, for my master's thesis, I did, um, it's actually, uh, uh, it's about um, how, how uh, do residential streets need as much car parking as they do? So like, do you really need uh, car parking on both sides of a residential street, especially ones with driveways and stuff? So I did uh, some data collection on residential streets to determine sort of what the capacity for parked cars was and what the actual use was and made some recommendations for how to redesign residential streets. Uh, that actually got incorporated into a chapter of a book called uh, Retrofitting Sprawl. So I think I can go on Amazon and buy Retrofitting Sprawl. I don't know if it's expensive or not. Uh, but if you want to read that, you can actually read it. Uh, uh, and then I did my PhD research on sort of actual transportation in the suburbs. So I'm working on getting those uh, published. And when I do, I'll make videos on those. Um, so hopefully my first publication should happen in the next calendar, in the next, next 12 months. So hopefully we'll get a video on that research. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. I thought about doing urban planning videos but it feels the field is oversaturated. Opinion? Uh, do it. We need more voices. Uh, I, I, that's always my answer, is we need more people posting videos about city planning. Uh, I remember I did, my first video came out almost seven years ago, and I felt like I was posting into the void, and now it's livelier than ever. Um, just, just always consider like what unique perspective you can bring to this. Like, what's your voice? Like, what's your take on this? Right? Mine tends to be a little bit more academic because that's sort of where I am. Um, right? Uh, Jason and not just bikes tends to be a little bit more advocacy because like he doesn't have that formal background in planning, which is awesome. Uh, you know, like we have different sort of perspectives, um, and that's great. So, what is your perspective? Uh, what specializations you recommend for California urban planning students? Transportation and housing are big ones. Uh, you'll never get, you'll never <laughs> run out of work doing either one in California. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, so, and then uh, what universities, colleges would recommend inside uh, in the U.S.? I'm a senior in high school interested in urban planning. Great. Um, Cal Poly, come here. Come come learn from me. Come, come, come to my classes. But no, really. Um, uh, in the United States, I would say find the ones uh, that are in the area that you want to practice. Um, find the ones, especially for a bachelor's degree, find the one that's not going to break the bank. Like there's not really a big difference in planning programs between one, you know, at an Ivy League that's going to cost you like an arm and a leg and then like one that's a public school in your state. Like truly like you're going to learn most of the same things. There might be some differences in alumni network or whatever, but like planning is a pretty egalitarian field. There's not really like sort of like a snooty planning cabal that like you get into by going to an Ivy League school. And I say this as somebody who got a degree in planning at an Ivy League school, um, there, there's really no difference. So um, go find a good accredited program uh, in, in a city you want to be in. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, I think concise edited clips of this live stream could work well as YouTube shorts. Wow, Alex, thank you. You're thinking like a real uh, real YouTuber. I should I should do that. I, w I wasn't even thinking about that. Um, so, yeah, uh, all right. Let's see. All right, 
So, um, all right, I think I might wrap up here just because I've been talking for over an hour. I really appreciate you coming out. Uh, anybody who's been here, uh, I'm so sorry if I didn't get to your topic. I think I will, I want to do this at least annually. So every time a new application process comes up, I can do this again with folks uh, to give it my advice on the field and, and, and the applications and whether or not you should go get a degree. My parting thoughts are we need city planners. We literally do not have enough city planners uh, currently. Um, a degree in city planning is worthwhile. If you're a, a kind of person who likes geography, political science, uh, design, anything like that, but you want sort of a practical outlet for that, consider a degree in city planning. I think a lot of folks don't even realize that this degree exists, um, but folks who sort of transfer in are like, why didn't I find this sooner? And then you have a direct career path out that you can choose to take or you can do something else. So you're well suited as a generalist, but we also have a degree program that leads you directly into a career that provides you with a generally speaking, a stable middle class income, which is pretty cool. Um, so check it out. Um, thank you all for hanging out. Um, and I will see you on the next video and maybe the next live stream. So, all right. Bye guys.